So there are a few sentences toward the end of the section. We'll quickly go to them again before we move to the next section. <clears throat> a curse is laid on the pure joy of life, the curse of falsehood. Now this phrase curse is laid. A Puritan god, red drug, sin. Actually, they found one particular description in the Christian tradition of mysticism. What is the curse? It is for this because of this curse that Christ had to get crucified. Puritan God because it's curse. Red truck. <laughs> you are a formalist. <laughs> there used to be kind of uh, pellets made in red color. In the 18th century, 17th century, small uh, 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 tablets, pellets were made uh, uh, in red color. And uh, uh, when you take that tablet, it's a kind of a drug. You get uh, uh, intoxicated. You have different kind of experience like that. You see, see. So uh, all these phrases. <laughs> you're, 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 you're familiar with that? Yeah. No, yeah. Now, we, now we have got different types, you yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so red drugs, sin, child, all these things belong to that particular period of uh, uh, sort of uh, strange, strange Christian mysticism, you see. Yeah. And Savitri is of course familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> she is telling it to Yama, to death, that after all, life is something which is really very pure, full of joy and all that, but there is a curse laid on it, curse due to the falsehood and therefore all these things happening. And then she gives the example of this curse, a Puritan God made pleasure the poisonous fruit. So the, the, the fruit is really poisonous. You don't know that, but you enjoy it. And uh, naturally, you enjoy, but still behind that in it is poison. You see, poison. A red drug in a marketplace of death. So that is how they used to sell the drink. So he uses the, she uses the word marketplace of death, you see. And sin, the child of nature's ecstasy. So, this, in other words, she is, in essence, she is telling here that after all, life is based on pure joy. But something happened. Something, how it happened, why it happened, that is a different story. Something happened. And therefore, on that, there is a curse laid on it. You see, the spirit and God, very holy, pious, sacred, you have got your own moral ideas of life and existence and of God. And in fact, the whole philosophy of Puritanism is based on that concept, you see, which was very popular in the 17th and 18th centuries in Europe, you see, particularly. Now, this is something which is, in fact, I will say, very characteristic of a certain type of mysticism in Christian philosophy, which is not present in India at all. But does it mean it attempts the soul to self hurt and fall? How can self hurt it? and fall? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So self hurt. Who? Self hurt. Soul itself has hurt himself. How? Well, the, 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 because it's tempted, it tempts the soul. That is the play of the falsehood. Yeah, but how can the soul hurt itself? The soul is yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it has taken the stand. It is there for a purpose, perhaps. 
see, a specious trick of an infernal power by some kind of a uh, magic trickery, etc., power has managed to pull it back into this place. See. The infernal power is what is doing all that mischief. And because of that, the soul is tempted and it hurt itself and fell. Well, actually, it means that the veil is so thick that it does not see the truth behind it. It has gone, entered into that kind of a situation where the veil has covered itself completely from the truth from which it has come. Well, it is a part of the play. It has accepted that. That was, this we have of course seen last time, beauty and truth as a twins, mm. De, sorry, delight and beauty as twins. So that is a uh, secondary statement. But dreaded, therefore because of this dread, the saint and the sage, they are also kind of drawn into it. So if the soul can get tempted, what about sage and soul? Saint and says they also get kind of dragged into it, you see. Because the soul itself can happen that, gets tempted into it. A curse is laid. See, I mean, this is exactly what has happened. You take the, uh, take any example. The famous example, of course, of Christ himself. How have people fallen into that state? That they, they don't see the light which he has brought, the power, the love which he has brought. They don't see it at all, you see. The cover is so thick that the soul has withdrawn, so to say, completely into it, and something is driving them to go to that extreme. Dreaded by aspiring saints, therefore they want to be careful. Actually, dreaded by, this is a uh, very occult, statement. In fact, the, any person who is trying to lead a spiritual life, he would try to keep away from all these things as far as possible. Because there is something in him which can drag him into it and the fall is there, you see. The fall is there, you see. It can happen any time, any moment, you see. Dreaded by aspiring saint and saint, is shunned, dangerous and ambiguous cheat, a specious trick of an infernal power. In fact, I, this, this sums up the whole thing, is the trick or the power. Tame the soul, it tamed the soul to its self-hurt and fall. Now, your question, I mean it tamed the soul, it does not mean that the soul has fallen what this sin really is. Want to know what sin really is? <laughs> then the explanation is go to the cross. Go to the cross, standing Christ nailed there and then you know what this sin really is. What you have done to him? Why he has come? Why he has accepted that did it all? In other words, the condition is so severe, so painful, so downward pulling that God himself has to undergo, suffer through that. Well, the original sin, we have seen the original sin, what it is. The original sin is basically the sin of separation from the divine source. And its power is such that this is what happened. So if you want to, so what sin is, go to the cross and see that the whole world, this whole organization is such that you have separated yourself completely from the divine source. A curse laid on the pure joy of life, delight 
God's sweetest sign and beauty's twin, dreaded by aspiring saint and all you say, is shunned. So delight is shunned. Basically, delight is shunned. A dangerous and ambiguous cheat, a species trick of an infernal power, it tames the soul to its self hurt and power uh, and, and fall. It a species trick. Yeah. Infinite power, the, uh, uh, the power of darkness. Trick means it has, it has tricked. It is tricking, yeah. But the trick is with the light. Yeah. 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 Greeted by the sense, yeah. because uh, it looks like an unhidden natural cheat. Yeah, you see, it took. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To give the, to give the, uh, you see, drained by the aspiring saint and austere, to give the, a kind of a far fetched analogy. In his entire life of 82 years, Plato never smiled, never laughed. <laughs> never smiled, never laughed. Plato. Because he says that laughing, smiling makes you emotional. It means that you are you're subject to emotion. And emotion should be avoided, shunned. Because if you get emotional, then your reasoning gets clouded. Your wisdom gets hazy. And therefore, in order to avoid that thing, you cannot laugh, you cannot smile at all, you see. You should not, you see. <laughs> so that is how it is shunned. So smiling, laughing is shunned by uh, Plato because the effect will be that you will get distanced from Wisdom. You'll move away from wisdom, you see. <laughs> Dreaded by aspiring saint and, and say, is shunned a dangerous and ambiguous cheat, a spacious trick of an infernal power. Infernal power, that is the, the, nation, the, the nation power, the power of darkness itself, of inconscience, you see. It tempted the soul to his Self-hurt and fall. His own fall. Soul's own fall. And then a Puritan God made pleasure a poisonous fruit. Actually, the fall is what? You have got in the, in the biblical description. Want to know what sin really is? Go to the cross. Casting of rebellious angels out of heaven. When the angels abled in heaven, they were thrown back on your immortal world, you see. And then a curse was laid upon earth at that point of time. The drowning of the drowning of the world by water, that the whole world will be flooded with water, it will be destroyed, drowned. That is the curse. With the fall of the angels, there will be sorrow, suffering and all that. And then, as a result of that, there will be flood. And the whole world will be flooded with it and drowned. That is the curse which is laid with that fall. And then, of course, burning storm with, with sulfur and brimstone, you see. That is a part of the same thing. The, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon brimstone and fire, you see. When their rebellion took place, you see. So now this is, in other words, it is a kind of a moralistic thing. Avoid emotional, vitalistic relationships, contacts. If you do that, 
then a curse is laid upon you. And then the result is, you'll get drowned, there'll be fire, you'll be burnt and that kind of a thing, you see. So that is what the Puritan God does. A moralistic God will do that kind of a thing, you see. Or red drug in the marketplace of death. Actually, the notes which I sent you, morning, <laughs> they, they give all the details of red drug and <laughs> all those things are there, that you see. Red drug in the marketplace of death and sin, the child of nature's ecstasy. Yet, so in spite of this calamity, of this fall, of this sin, yet every creature hunts for happiness. Buys with harsh pangs or tears by violence from the dull breast of the inanimate globe, some fragment of some of some broken shard of bliss. You struggle for bliss. That thing is always there. From the dull breast of the inanimate globe, lifeless globe, you buy bliss. And what kind of bliss? A fragment, a bit of it, a tiny part of it, or some broken shard of bliss, broken shard. <laughs> Actually, shard itself is a broken piece. Yeah. <laughs> So what you get really is a bit of it, the whole big beautiful vase is there, it is broken and that little bit of it is there, that is what you buy in the market you see. <laughs> <laughs>